Jeff, you guys survived the uh, cold weather out there. That wind was brutal. <laughs> a rough day, but we got through it, and uh, it's, it's good for us, man. When you're practicing that kind of weather, it means you're playing important football games. And Luckily in my career, I haven't had, as a head coach, I haven't ever had a team that got to the cold weather where the games weren't very important. I can't imagine having to coach in that mess and you know you're out of it. At least my teams have always been in it and we were playing for something. Um, I couldn't imagine what that's like. But we got through it and uh, we'll be better for it. Kyle put in the notes, you guys are uh, pretty good in the month of November since you've been here. What What is it about once the calendar flips over? Yeah, that's what I've always said. Um, I've been blessed in my career to have a bunch of really good coaches that love kids. Um, and our kids always love playing for us and we love coaching them. So we just enjoy being around each other. We like being in the facility. We like meetings. We like practice. Uh, we just like football. And uh, we love the kids and they love us. And I think that just matters. I don't think our schemes are any different or I don't know that we do anything that's that incredible, you know, as far as schemes. But our kids do them really hard. They do them really well. And uh, I would say that's the reason why. And we got great players. I've, <laughs> I've had great quarterbacks for, for 19 years and great linemen and receivers and linebackers and D-linemen and kickers and punters. It's always the players. And we, I've had a bunch of great players in our career. Jeff, what is it about Coach Morris's offense that stands out? How is it different from a typical area? Um, you know, just probably the execution. I mean, he's kind of a quarterback whisperer. I mean, anybody coaching becomes a great quarterback overnight. Um, you know, he played in the system. Uh, he's coached in the system. Uh, he's intelligent. And he's just a sharp dude. I've got to know Eric pretty well. He really helped me a lot when he was at UIW. He always took all my calls. He always gave me advice, told me where the best restaurants were in San Antonio. And just, he was just a good friend to me. And uh, I have a lot of respect for him. He does a really good job coaching. What about that quarterback, Chandler Rogers? What allows him to thrive at the level that he has so far? Uh, well, he's accurate. Uh, he's a gunslinger mindset, like he, he's not afraid. And he's a good athlete, he can move around. He's got all the things you're looking for when you're looking for a quarterback. And he's played a lot, you know, he's played a lot. That, that always helps too. Looking at their defense, what stands out about, they've had some shootouts in recent games, but the defense seems to have been able to keep them in. So what, what stands out? Yeah, they really figure out stuff and they adjust well. In the second half, they've been playing fantastic. Mm -hmm. So I would say their, their sideline adjustments, the character of their kids. Uh, they have a belief in their new coach, you can tell. They have a belief in that quarterback. You don't, you don't play to the very last play. It was Memphis and Tulane in eight straight quarters and not have a really good football team. Jeff, you had, I believe, three ejections last week against East Carolina. What's the status of those players for this week? Are they available? No, there were not three. There was one. One? Yeah. Uh, uh, we'll find out. Um, we'll find out when the conference lets us know, and then we'll let you know. I saw you po po posted on social media last night something about uh, an auction. Kind of, what's the situation with that, and how did that come together? Uh, that's just uh, one of our collectives. Uh, it's two one zero city fans. I don't think you have the opportunity to uh, bid on that through November the third, and that's all going towards the football department. So much appreciated if people jump on that and help us out a little bit. So is that an NIL thing or does that go to the actual like program department funding? Uh, I'm not sure. I'll have, to, I'll have to find that out. Coach, I'm sure you've been already asked this. I haven't been here for a couple of weeks. What's been the biggest difference on this offense from preseason to conference play this offense seems to be clicking on all cylinders where it wasn't earlier in the season. What's what's changed? Oh, just time on task with each other, uh, learning the strengths and weaknesses of each player. Uh, you know, we're a different team than we were last year, and we're a different team than we thought we were going to be in fall camp, and then we're a different team than we thought we were going to be in September. So there's just been a lot of changing going on that we weren't anticipating. Uh, we thought we would have JT back by now, and. You know, that's not happening. Uh, you know, Frank went down, and, and then we couldn't. It's just been a lot of different things going on. And we just kind of, you know, Frank's playing for his third offensive coordinator in three years. 
that's that's something in itself. And uh, it's just been a lot of different stuff. And uh, our, again, back to what I said earlier, our kids just keep getting better every day. We just gotten a little bit better every day. We've kind of found us an old line that we stayed together with now for a little while. We've, we've been blessed that we haven't got really injured too much up there since Makai went down. And uh, kind of settled in our receiving core on where that's all going to look like, where we're going to leave them and put them, how we're going to use the running backs. There's just a lot of stuff. Uh, I told you on offense, you can be out there on air and not score. Not to mention, you've got to block 11 people that are angry over there. Thanks,